I'm here from the Center for High Performance Computing, and I would like to give you a, basically a broad and quick overview of, of who the people are that's using the CHPC, what we are doing to support them, um, and so, so I'm not going to go into detail in anything, well, in very much detail, but hopefully this will, will um, sensitize you, so if you want to talk to me about something specific afterwards, you're most welcome. So just in terms of an outline, I will give you just a brief background on, on the CHPC, then who is using the CHPC? And then also something about how we support our user community. This is not an e exhaustive list, but I will focus on a few examples of training, our national meeting, student cluster competition, HPC ecosystems project, also SKA read readiness program. And then I will just end off by, by telling you a bit about the resources at the, at the CHPC. So just in terms of background, um, the CHPC is the only national HPC facility in South Africa, which is directly funded by the South African government, and that is now the Department of Science and Technology, the DSD. We are administered through the CSIR, through the Maraca Institute. So we are part of um, the, the, the business unit of the CSIR, where Sunrain and Dereza um, is, is also hosted. Um, the CHPC already started operations about 10 years ago, June 2007. We are based in Cape Town, and it currently hosts the largest high-performance computing system, not only in South Africa, but on the African continent. And I will say a bit about that a bit later. Um, the CHPC has about 40 full-time employees, and we are roughly divided in a research, technical, and operational divisions, and I'm responsible for the, the research side of our, our business. Um, taking another step back, I think it's the first time it's been said today, I don't know whether it was, has been mentioned, but there is a, a entity which is called the National Integrated Cyber Infrastructure System. It stands for NICIS. And NICIS is an entity that unites the basic legs of cyber infrastructure. So Sunren that's been mentioned today, Dereza, and the CHPC represents the, 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 the networking data and computing um, legs of, of this. And the only reason why I'm putting this up is to, to emphasize that NICIS is an, a, a combined entity at the moment. Uh, it has been um, integrated by the DSD and it is working from a single budget. So I usually use this to show commitment from the government. So well, the government of South Africa is committed to cyber infrastructure as a whole. It recognizes you cannot only have compute, you cannot only have networking, you cannot only have data um, um, resources. You need to combine this to, to actually deliver a... a, a holistic service to, to users. But I will focus on the computing part, the CHPC, for, for the rest of the talk. So who is using the CHPC? And I just checked now um, the user status of, of the CHPC, 23 March today. We have 207 registered research programs. This is increasing almost every day. Um, just short of 700 registered users. So a research program is typically, say, a, a, a faculty member at the university that has a research group usually, say, postgrad students that can constitute the research program, and then members of this program then constitutes the registered users of the, of the cluster. So if you just look very broadly, um, where are they, these research programs, how is it distributed? Three quarters of it is from the South African academic community. So this is truly by far the largest community that uses the CHPC. Um, then it's also by what I term as South African public users, which is the non-academic public. We also have a significant component of industry or even private sector users. The CHPC is not only for academic use. We can also accommodate um, some private sector use. And then I also have a, a small segment of African academic users, which I will say a little bit more just now. So just to break, down it, break it down a bit further, if you look at that large chunk of 75% of the South African academic institutions, I just show that it's quite well distributed amongst the universities. The biggest users, UCT, University of Pretoria, UKZN, University of Stellenbosch, then also Wits, Rhodes University, Northwest University, but also you can see quite a number of, of others. So we are, we are really uh, a national um, facility when it comes to who the users are from the academic community. Um, just looking at, I'm just going to quickly run through some of the non-academic, which we call public, typically the CSIR, is a, is, a, is a significant user. But then we also have other entities like the Weather Service, the Agricultural Research Council, and, and, and so forth. So you can see that these all form important public institutions that should also benefit from HPC infrastructure that is put down from, from public funds. Um, SA Industry, we have a, 
a small but significant in the industrial segment of, of users or research programs. I'm not going to say much about it except to mention that from a DST perspective, the fact that HPC resources is put down is also meant to benefit, say, private sector innovation and research. And that is the reason why it is made accessible to, to these entities. Of course, these entities don't use it for free, like public or academic institutions. They, it's, it's based on a cost recovery use, use its model. And then just in terms of African universities, um, the CHPC is also open for principal investigators, for research programs to register from certain African countries. And you, these countries are the so-called SKA partner countries um, of South Africa. I will say a bit more about it, it just now, but I can just mention it. At this stage, we only have a limited number of programs registered. So from Kenya and Ghana we have, and, but I know there's also interest from Botswana and Namibia and so on. And it's also, hopefully we'll see by the end of the talk, it's also an invite for these countries to become more directly involved. Um, that is not to say that anybody is excluded from using the CHPC. The, the usage model of the CHPC is such that anyone, almost from any country in the world, can make use of the CHPC, but the principal investigator of, of programs can, should either be, can only be from South Africa or from these partner countries. But the principal investigator can add members to the program from anywhere if there's an established collaboration. So please see this as an, a, quite an open platform for, for users to, to come and use. And then just a very a bit small maybe, but a rough distribution of, of what are the science domains typically supported. And you will see that chemistry, material science, bioinformatics is quite, quite significant, but also the earth sciences where your climate and weather modeling happens, and then also some other areas not necessarily less important, but don't have necessarily that many users, um, are also listed there. So it's quite a diverse distribution. Okay, now coming to a bit more specifically the, the user community support. Um, the mandate of the CHPC, yes, is there to, to provide computational resources, but we also have an equally strong mandate from the DST to be involved in human capital development pro projects where people are trained to make use of, of HPC facilities. And therefore, we have quite a diverse program to, to deliver on this mandate. Um, I'm going to highlight the, uh, a few aspects like the CHPC national meeting, dedicated CHPC training events. The ones with the asterisks, I have an extra slide on. So I'll just quickly mention that we have annual programs, what we call, say, the introductory programming school, which focuses on really introductory programming skills for, for our users. What we tend to find is that we have many users that's experts in their, say, scientific domains, but they do not necessarily have the exposure to even basic programming skills, and, and they need um, the support and training to make more effective use of the CHPC. We also have the winter school in parallel programming, which we see is the next level of training, where people are introduced to, to parallelized um, programming um, and, and scale, and how do you scale code. So that is also a program that happens annually every, um, in June every year. Um, the student cluster competition I will say more about, the HPC ecosystems project I will say more about, and then I can just mention that domain-specific workshops, there's quite a lot of ad hoc workshops that we support, usually spe specific to say certain domains, maybe a, a software package that users are, are interested to learn more of, and we also then um, collaborate with say vendors to, to, to do this kind of training. Then SK Readiness Program, and also I always mention there is also CSR students and programs that the CHPC also participate in, in terms of accommodating students. Um, just the CHPC national meeting, this is a meeting that we have every year. And the main purpose of this meeting is to provide a platform where the users of the CHPC can meet and come and talk and engage about their work. So it's, it's usually very well attended and we have very good participation from, from our users. The last time it was held was in December 2016 in East London at the East London ICC. And the theme of that meeting was focusing on a decade of HPC in South Africa, seeing that we are moved in the 10th year of existence of the, of the CHPC. I'd like to emphasize that although it's a CHPC national meeting, it has very much turned into a, a three-way partnership between the CHPC, Sunrun and Ariza to, to host this conference in recognition of the fact that cyber infrastructure is more, more than just compute. We usually have quite a, a mix of, of notable speakers where we invite international um, HPC experts to come and, and, and tell us about modern trends and, and, and developments in the field. So 
we have built up quite a reputation of, of drawing these individuals, so we are proud to, to have them come um, most years. And then I would like to emphasize, we also, in the last meeting, we had a very successful, let's call it workshop slash tutorial, birds of a feather, feather part of the program, which was very well attended. We had two days. The first day, about 250 people participated in different workshops. I list them there. I'm not going to read all of them. That's just some examples of the kind of workshops that we had. On the last day, we had about 150 people attending. And the... The important thing about these workshops, these are not workshops that the CHBC now decides, say, well, these are important, let's host them. These are all user-initiated. So we put out a call, say, come forward, tell us what you would like to, to come and present or, or host as a workshop. And that's why you have these diverse um, topics that's being, being listed. And it's also an indication of how involved um, the user community is in this process. And just to advertise already, the next CHBC national meeting will be held in Durban on the 4th to the 8th of December. We are in the early stages of, of organizing this. We have not even have a, a final, final venue confirmed, but that is where it's going to be, and you will see an extensive program. There is a website link that will become much more populated from now forward. Then I just have one slide about the student cluster competition, and strictly you sh cannot regard the students participating in this as users of the CHPC, because this is the only human capital development program where the CHPC focus on undergraduate students. Most of the, f uh, the attention is on postgraduate, but these are for undergraduate students. And what this competition entails is that students um, combine in teams, they apply in teams to participate at our winter school, that's the annual June event. Um, there's about 22 teams of four, so you talk about well, 88 students that participate. And in the first part of the competition, they, they learn the basic skills of how do you put a cluster together, what goes into the software stacks and so needed to run a cluster. And from the performance of those teams, 10 teams are selected to participate in the national competition that takes place at the same time as the CHPC national meeting. So that's about 40 students that then come and, and, and participate. At that stage of the competition, there's quite significant sponsorships involved where we have Dell actually providing hardware that they build their mini clusters and where a number of challenges are put to the students where they need to, to do um, um, tests. And um, from that competition, a winning team is then crowned, which in the end consists of, of six students. And this team then represents South Africa at the international competition, which is the ISC conference in Germany every year around June. So there's a, we have participated four times before, and the CHPC has got a particularly good track record um, of actually winning this competition three years of the four that, that they've been participated in, and we're going to participate again in in June this year. So it's a, it's a very, um, I think, good program to get students involved from an early age already. Um, and it's also doing a lot to, to, for the, um, well, to expose the CHPC to the, to the international community as well. Then another project that I would like to highlight is the so-called HPC Ecosystems Project. Now what it means is it, it's a strategy to repurpose some HPC equipment. So what you see there in the top is a supercomputer that Texas Advanced Computing Center it's called the Ranger computer that was decommissioned some years ago. And it was broken up in parts um, and 20 of these racks were donated to the, the CHPC and this has been distributed to, to different sites um, which we call the HPC Ecosystem Initiative. In, initially we called it the Ranger project because of the, the link to the computer but since then we've got other, comp other equipment also being part of this and also even systems being decommissioned at the CHPC becomes part of this. The main purpose of this is to provide equipment for training. It's not necessarily there to provide an institution now with a, a computer for, for research. Of course, if they can use it for research, then that's a bonus. But the main purpose is training where we, you realize that you need hands-on equipment that you can take apart to, to train how to, to put um, systems together. So I'm just giving a, a very brief summary in the local South African sites. The four first ones, University of Fort Hare, the University of KwaZulu-Natal, University of Venda, and the University of Witwatersrand were the four, let's call it, test sites where it was rolled out from the beginning. I also show in colors, um, green means it's in place, red is not in place yet, and yellow is, is on its way. So not everything is, is fully operation, operational or used and then needs so there's some that need some of the um, support for equipment to operate still and power and cooling infrastructure quite not in place. But you can see overall the green is, is being filled up in these boxes. And there's also involvement 
of some equipment, the Stellenbosch Boss University, Solplike University, and Northwest University recently where where some of these equipment so plaque there's still a lot that needs to be happened but it's already been identified so this is just a process of of expanding hpc training um, and experiences at these sites this is the local sites there's also african sites and here we refer to the ska partner countries which i will also say more about but it's basically eight countries that's part of the ska the square kilometer array project i list them there botswana namibia zambia madagascar mauritius mozambique kenya and ghana and the same the same process. We distribute equipment to these sites. You will see sites are ID'd, and we also keep track of what has equipment that's been shipped, what is ready, and also the system administrator training that goes along with it. So you can see um, Botswana, Namibia, Zambia, Madagascar is, is quite, um, quite well equipped already, whereas Mauritius, Mozambique, Kenya is still on its way. Um, in some cases, like Mozambique, Kenya, and Ghana, no equipment has been, has been sent. But this is an ongoing project, and um, it's also a very good way of, of building the, the HPC community in these countries. And I just would like to emphasize this is, although it's an HPC ecosystems project, it's of course a, a, me a mechanism to get the research community also to recognize what HPC can do for them. And that's why we have the second leg to this program, which we call the SKA Readiness Program. Now, just in terms of, of SKA, I can mention that at the CHPC, we are dedicated to contribute or support SKA. We have dedicated staff for in the astronomy community, in astronomy domain that, that support um, different SKA project focus areas. I'm not not all of them are, are projects run at the CHPC. It might be users making use of the CHPC, for example, even the design of some of these radio astronomy dishes. I know it's still in Ross University, some of activity there. But at the CHPC, storing of, of CAT7 data, which is the precursor data, and also development of the Meerkat data center, which is the next phase of the SKA, um, the first part of these. Um, data racks are going to be hosted or are being hosted at, at the CHPC. Then there's also projects like the Science Data Processing Consortium. CyberSK is a cloud-based web front end that's been developed at the CHPC. So there's different kinds of ways to support the, the SKA. But the one that I want to focus on is the support for the so-called SKA readiness strategy. It is recognized that if we want these countries to be involved actively in the SKA program, you also need a dedicated focus on on, on developing skills in these countries. Therefore, dedicated funding also from the DST has been made available from 2016. Um, and the next slide summarizes some a little bit more. Already about 22 trips has been conducted to these countries, where about 200 contacts has been, has been made. I need to, to give credit to, to Professor Catherine Chris at the CHPC that is driving this project and has done a superb job in in, in building the, these communities and, and interactions. Um, in terms of user development, it's identification of where the users are that, that should be developed and skills um, being be developed for. It's defining our joint projects, looking at data science and also astronomy courses. I need to emphasize that this is not a, a program to, to fo only, only focus on astronomy. It is focused on data science and HPC in all kinds of domains where we can, can um, help develop the skills for the, for the community. Um, each country, of course, represents unique challenges because you will see it's a diverse set of, of countries that, that needs to, to, be, um, to be interacted with. Um, and I can also mention, uh, as before, that these countries also have direct access to the CHPC. So if, can, if, these, if principal investigators in these countries can come and well, register at the CHPC just as an as a SA PI will do. Um, so this is a very short summary. There's a lot of activities, lots of interesting work going on in this area, but this is just to, to give you a bit of an idea. Okay, then I'm almost at the end. Um, just something about the resources at the CHP. And when I talk about resources, I don't want to talk, start talking about hardware. I want to talk about the people. And I list a few see, a re research domain areas there. And there's, of course, many more that supported at the CHPC, but those ones that I listed there, we have dedicated full-time employees or research scientists that support them. So in the astronomy, cosmology space, in the physics space, we have, in astronomy, we have two individuals. Physics, we have one. In the chemistry, material science space, two individuals that's doing full-time support. Computational mechanics, we have two people. Bioinformatics, we have two people. Earth sciences, we have one. Earth sciences is an important area. That's probably the biggest users of the CHPC in terms of just the size of, of jobs and, and calculations that's being done. And also in the computer science 
the main we have a, a, a one individual, but also in, in terms of HPC systems and technology research, the CHPC has a has a dedicated laboratory of five members looking at testing next generation HPC. This is also the laboratory that's important for rollout of the HPC ecosystems project. They also do the student cluster competition that is called the Advanced Computer Engineering Laboratory or the ACE Lab. So if you need advice on on what to to acquire yourself or or, or, or HPC systems advice. We are there to, to help. We also have a GPU specialist, um, although we don't have GPU resources at the moment. And of course, the grid applications in CERN is also being supported at the, the CHPC. And then I just need to mention, of course, a comprehensive technical support and a technical team that maintain and look after our resources. So what, what do we have? Um, the first phase of our, our compute cluster, it's called Lingao. It's a Setswana word for cheetah, with the emphasis, of course, being on fast um, was the first phase of this class was launched on the 7th of June less than a year ago so it was in June 2016 it was a 783 teraflop machine which put us 121st in the top 500 um, this was upgraded very recently 7th of March about two weeks ago the, it was released and um, now it it's a petascale system so it's Africa's first petascale, petascale um, HPC cluster um, representing, I would say, a state-of-the-art um, um, facility. I'm not going to spend too much time. I, this will be in the slides. If you need a bit more details on the different, on the specs of the system, I can just maybe point out it's about almost 33,000 core machine, 1,368 nodes. And um, yeah, total number of racks, about 24, and then also some of the limpact performance you can see there at the bottom. So there's enough. And it's one thing to put down the machine, but how is it used? And what I'm showing you is just a snapshot. So, so November, December last year, it was still the first phase of the system. You will see the cycles of how it's being used. You can see during the week it peaks, and then it drops off over weekends where users may on maybe not that active, and even a day-night variation you can see. But the important thing to notice is that it's not running at 100% capacity. And somebody will say, well, this is not good. I mean, the system should be. But in fact, that is the ideal situation. You would like a cluster that is well utilized, like it's shown there. But there's always capacity for the user that now needs immediate a burst of, of resources. So that is actually, I still refer to this as the honeymoon phase of the cluster. Um, the January, February graph I'm showing there, um, we unfortunately had to shut down three racks due to a power provisioning issue. So it, peaked, it could only peak out at about 80%. That's why it flattens off there. So the capacity was really stretched. Um, just before the upgrade, the very drops off is where we had to shut it down for the, the upgrade. And I just looked at the February, March graph. The first two and a half weeks was um, a shutdown due to the upgrade. And you can all, and then we started off with a few burst big runs. And you can already see how the utilization has now increased. Remember, this cluster is now significantly larger. About five racks were added to the existing 14 racks. And I just checked the, over the last day or two, it's already touching over 80 90%. And it depends very much on when the big users comes on board. So if the big users submit, it, there's sudden spikes, but can also be sudden drops when those jobs um, finishes off. So you can see that at the, at the very moment, the CHPC is in a very good position in terms of being able to provision in terms of capacity for, for users. Um, the last graph is just the, the previous one I showed you, research programs. This is just in terms of CPU hours being utilized. This is more or less the distribution that you see. A total of about 86 million CPU hours has been used since April last year when Lingao came online. More than half of it goes to materials, science, and chemistry. This is just the big user group that we have. They're not necessarily your biggest users in terms of calculation size. They usually are, use a few nodes at a time, but they submit lots of calculations. Bioinformatics quite significant. The 6% Earth Sciences, you don't have many users, but we have big users. So you have people that will submit thousands of, of cores in a single run and then some of the other areas are just mentioned there, like health sciences computer science physics computation mechanics and so on so this is where i i'm going to end by just showing you there is a, a a web link there to the user database or website of the chpc anybody that's interested in getting access um, go there all the information is there um, we are you can you can apply online and we will support there's also the chpc website and also my email address so thank you very much, Bruce, for the opportunity, and I hope it's, it's worthwhile for, for this community to take note of this as well. Thanks.